Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 24th, 2021, quarter around 2, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about today, but a look at Invest Area 90L with a 60% chance of development and what impacts it might be bringing to Florida over the next several days. Jumping straight at everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not too much is occurring. We notice that we do have Invest Area 90L that is on the tail end of this cold front that is passing through portions of Florida right now, and this is where the circulation is. Not a very well-defined area of low pressure, but hurricane hunters are currently in route to see if this is indeed a closed circulation. We'll take a look at that here in, more in a minute. We also have a pretty strong tropical wave coming off at the, at the low latitudes here off the coast of Africa. This too, though, is expected to be moving westward into more unfavorable conditions. You kind of notice all the stratocumulus clouds over here just generally unfavorable conditions across the tropical Atlantic, and that is expected to persist at least into about the second week of August, uh, if not maybe just a little bit longer, uh, then the more favorable background state will probably come there. Uh, but looking here again, 90L with a 60% chance of development, a moderate, uh, a high and moderate chance of development. Again, this will be moving westward over the next several days and will eventually move westward into Florida. And as it does so, this will be bringing some showers and thunderstorms with it. Maybe some gusty winds and squally conditions uh, could be expected, especially once this circulation uh, passes on the western coast of Florida. Uh, most of the activity is now on the eastern side, and we can kind of look at that here on the zoomed invisible loop. Again, we have most of the convection right now that is off towards the east. So as the circulation moves westward, all this eastward uh, convection will be focused here and will start to move uh, into these areas. So once the circulation passes, then the back side of this will be where most of the shower and thunderstorm activity is. We do now, however, notice that there is a little bit, at least a little bit more of convection trying to develop closer to where this low level center is, which is located right here, but is having a very tough time. We kind of notice where the denotion of the frontal boundary is, the front is actually kind of right here. This is where the frontal boundary is. And again, not really that there's cold air behind it, but there's a little bit of dry air behind here. And there's not really any cold air behind this, but it is a cold front by definition only. And thus, again, this is where the transition is. We've got the dry, stable air to the north, and we've got the warm, moist air to the south. And this front line here is also the denotion of a change of vertical wind shear as we have strong shear that is coming out of the south below, coming, basically coming from the northwest blowing to the southeast. And uh, along with that, that is causing kind of this disruption in the cloud pattern. We notice that there's showers and thunderstorms mainly confined to the eastern, portion, uh, eastern portions of the circulation where there's very little convection right around the actual circulation center. Uh, we'll see if the, uh, these little convective bursts are able to maintain themselves and wrap uh, itself around the low-level center and uh, thus intensify that vortex. Uh, right now, there's no real signs of that happening again, but we'll have to watch for whether or not development does occur in this area. Again, as this moves westward, this will be uh, kind of facing a lot of that vertical shear. We're going to take a look at that here. On the zoomed out visible satellite, we kind of notice where the front actually is at this time. We notice that here is our front that is kind of draped in through here. And again, behind this, you have a lot of dry air to the south and moist air or dry air to the north and more moist air to the south of here. And we notice that there's a little bit of an outflow pattern here kind of associated with some of the convection down here. This is where shear is generally lighter at the moment compared to up here. But by and large, this is kind of wedged in between a front and this very strong shear to the north. And as this moves off towards the west, again, this front will continue dipping south and this dry stable layer will continue uh, going south and the shear will pick up across this area very soon and should shut the window for tropical cyclone genesis once this crosses the florida peninsula so we'll just have to kind of keep an eye on that if we take a look here at the 850 millibar vorticity map this is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground and for context here these reds and whites that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level we noticed that here with invest area 90l again the circulation is located right in about here 
pretty good area of vorticity there at about 500 or at about 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet. But what we notice here, if we kind of back this out, it is strong from there's an actual area of low pressure to the north here over the Canadian Maritimes. And you have a warm front like that kind of in a trailing cold front uh, that is kind of back like this. It's actually probably more so an occluded front. But you kind of get the point that we have uh, this area of uh, this, this front here. And this is where the circulation is right here. But this front, again, you notice is going to be blasting in that shear and some of this dry, more stable air to the north of the system. And that's what's likely to kind of keep this uh, at a very low uh, chance for any substantial organization. We also notice because that it's very strong out, we've not really gotten any consolidated areas of low pressure to form. Yes, we have this area of low pressure here. Uh, it, I'm not so sure that it's a closed circulation fully, uh, but it does look like it is probably getting close to being a closed circulation because you can see that we have uh, southerly winds here and we are starting to kind of pick up on some of those uh, westerly winds here on the southern side of the circulation. What remains to be seen is whether or not we have easterly winds here at the very low levels uh, that are coming from the easterly side. If we have that, uh, these cloud features here are kind of obscuring that, but if we have that, uh, then this indeed will be a closed center of circulation, but it really lacks organization right now in terms of the convective structure. Uh, so right now, at least, this would probably not be classifiable as a tropical depression or storm. Now, one thing that is going for the system, though, over the next couple of days, as this kind of meanders around the Gulf Stream, will be the very warm sea surface temperatures being aided by the Gulf Stream. This is the look at the upper ocean heat content map updated as of this morning. And for context, whenever you start to see these uh, oranges and reds, that's basically indicating that you have some very deep upper ocean heat content, very supportive for tropical cyclones, uh, like out here in the Caribbean and parts of the Gulf of Mexico. But what we can kind of notice here, again, that this area where our system is kind of sitting off at right now, is under that warm loop current and is dealing with some pretty decent upper ocean heat content. So at least for the time being, this system does have some very warm waters to deal with at about 28, 29 Celsius. So the water temperatures are plenty supportive for tropical cyclone genesis. And uh, the fact that this is a constantly moving supply of warm water through the Gulf Stream, which is also uh, helping to kind of pump uh, warm, moist air around uh, so this should at least generate some convection. And again, I'm more concerned about once this passes uh, onto the western side here, the Florida Peninsula, that all of this uh, rain will be beginning to move westward with time as well. And all of that convection will eventually impact the land. So uh, really, it's kind of a very lopsided system, yes, but it could still pack at least 30, 40 mile per hour winds, maybe. And certainly... Uh, some very heavy rainfall under those convective bands that are off to the east. And you could get some tropical storm force gusts, especially in that uh, vicinity. So this is just something to kind of keep in mind as this passes through. Uh, again, the main inhibitor right now, this is the 12Z GFS valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, the 200 millibar wind flow in the, in the upper part of the atmosphere here, about 35,000 feet. What we notice is that we have a trough of low pressure here, and this is kind of strung out along that front. And we notice that, again, we have a change in the air mass to the north. Again, we have uh, very strong winds here coming basically out of the north and changing around this trough here at 200 millibars. And if we kind of look here at the vortex average sounding uh, for this area, what we notice is that there is some fairly strong shear. We have southeasterly winds here at the surface changing to kind of northeasterly at just about 700 millibars and northerly winds here above 500 millibars, and then changing back to westerly winds here at about 300 millibars. So we have three, uh, really about four changes in the wind direction with height uh, going from surface to just over 300 millibars, which we can also tell that there's some very dry continental air because uh, we can see here that the relative humidity is very far removed between the red line. This, the red line here is the temperature, and the green line tracing out here is the dew point. Uh, and what we can tell is that there's some very dry, stable air aloft. 
So any thunderstorms that end up developing will quickly transport this dry stable air aloft down to the surface. And in, in fact, this will end up creating a more hostile environment for tropical cyclone genesis. But on the flip side of that, if you get under any of these storms that kind of pulse up and collapse, they could generate 30, 40, 50 mile per hour winds, much more of a summertime like pattern overall for parts of like Florida, uh, where we're kind of used to thunderstorms going up. And after an hour or so, they collapse and bring those, you know, 50, sometimes 60 mile per hour winds down to the surface. So it is kind of one of those things where, you know, if you get under one of these, you could have the chance of seeing, you know, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds. But, you know, in, in terms of sustained tropical storm force conditions, it, it right now does not seem probable. But it's not impossible, but it's just not the most probable situation. Uh, once the system, though, begins to eventually cross over Florida, we can see that the wind shear direction actually becomes not out of the, the east generally, but we begin to encounter a more hostile environment. And if we look here at the model 850 vorticity map, again, we can definitely see where, again, the system moves over Florida within the next 24 hours or so. And then that energy is left to kind of dissipate over the Gulf of Mexico. And we can kind of see one of the reasons for that being this very dry air that is kind of around here. We have a very low shear, uh, but we have dry stable air again, all the way from just about 900 millibars uh, upwards uh, to the top here of the troposphere. So we have some very dry air and we notice that again, this dry air would be transported easily to the surface and, and creating just a very unfavorable uh, environment for tropical cyclones to kind of work within. And then eventually that kind of just dissipates there uh eventually something interesting that forms down here in the gfs but that's probably a convective feedback problem uh needless to say all right so not really much occurring but again there could be some local impacts gusty winds heavy rainfall uh the main concerns for right now we'll have to watch to see if this ends up developing uh, any further we have a reconnaissance aircraft mission that is in there uh, that is flying in there right now and we shall see what the results of that are and uh, from there, basically, we'll determine uh, what the structure overall looks like. But it does look like that this will at least have some shot at becoming a brief tropical depression before it makes landfall in Florida within the next 24 to 36 hours. All right. With that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.